Right guys, so I've got John Paul Stats here. Very excited to have him here. Um, he's been a, a you know close colleague and, and, a, and friend of mine for a number of years and we've done lots of training, um, slept in bunk beds in New Orleans with water <laughs> dripping on our foreheads. <laughs> he's, been in, he's been in practice for, um, for 28 years and um, he's the director of um, ICEAM. The Institute of Classics in East Asian Medicine in Sydney, Australia. He's also the clinic, the one and only clinics of in, a supervisor for um, for ICEAM. Um, and John Paul, you were just saying you you know you're a student of Arno Vesluis, and and you also have a, a an interest in acupuncture because you practice both herbal medicine and um, acupuncture. Is that right? Yeah, um, I've always I always originally started actually in acupuncture and got more into the herbal medicine as I was continuing my practice. But um, having been, I've been to both Japan and to China and I, I was introduced to a lot of the Japanese acupuncture because when I finished, I did my hospital type, um, internship in uh, Nanning and uh, well, it was great to find a lot, you know, learn a lot and it's great to just see truckloads of people. And then coming back, got a different exposure because you saw other practitioners were coming out and got exposed to um, Kiko Matsumoto with the Japanese style and she was she was a great presenter and was very you know dynamic and and had some, and you get some wow results type of thing which was really interesting, but also she spoke a lot of um, about the classics and um, so that well, had my interest, and then I saw Edward O'Fady and he did the same, and so I ended up going studying a lot with with both or well, initially whenever she came out, but I also went and studied with, with um, Edward O'Fady in his practice, and I went down and studied with uh, Ikeda Sensei and. And have gone back and forth quite a bit, and I got to know him quite well. And I mean, his daughter ended up living with us for six months, <laughs> and um, so I got to know them and practice a lot of that style, which is more the, the style of acupuncture I like to receive. And um, and I like the fact that they have a very strong foundation and interest in the classics, and so they sort of sort of come together quite nicely. Well, everybody I've ever sent to you, I mean, I've referred quite a few of my friends and family to you and they always just come back with such glowing reports. So, um, you oh, know, and nice, I, you. I've been to your practice a couple of times. Um, it's such a beautiful space. And, um, yeah, to see you put so much effort into that. And, uh, yeah, it's just wonderful to have someone like you in Australia. And, and, and now that you're, you know, you're able to do this sort of clinical supervising, which is the next step, um, which will really be beneficial for a lot of people in Australia. So, uh, yeah, thank you so much for all your hard work. Oh, thank you, Sam. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, so today um, I asked you the other day what you wanted to speak about and you mentioned a couple of formulas and you were kind of tossing it up in your head and then um, you sort of settled on um, some of the Shishin tons and modifications. Is that um, the gun sale what you, shin is what were you interested in? What's your favorite formula? Yeah, I, in practice, what I tend to use a lot of is um, a, a variation of the shear shing tongues the gun sale shear shing tongue, ban sha shear shing tongue, and shing jung shear shing tongue. I use a lot of that in practice. Um, I've got a an RMIT student at the moment observing in clinic and um. He was just he was kind of laughing because I mentioned how we were going to possibly talk about this. He goes, he goes, well, man, you certainly see a lot of the shishin tongues because we do a lot of harmonising. <laughs> and I went, yeah, it just happened. And each time he's been here, we've seen a lot of it. But uh, that and, and that I see a lot of in practice. So I felt I could talk more confidently and hopefully impart some different ideas on for people. And uh, and a lot that I've seen a lot more that happen. Also, a lot of the by her family formulas, the lily bulb by presentations. The by her, by her Diwang and so forth, by her Huashu. I use that a lot, and they seem to uh, dovetail quite nicely into the Shishin tongues. And a lot of the presentations today are getting a little bit more complex and a lot more uh, complicated, and this seems to um, address that nicely. And again, this is information that I've learned from the uh, Tian style through uh, Dr. Vesluis, Dr. Arno Vesluis. I'll just call him Mana, just to, you know, less formal. But he, um, I mean, it's a lot of that. that he, Dr. Tien's um, stuff that he really started to highlight was stuff that he would combine these two. And it was just like, just brilliant that his insight and then seeing it in clinic happen and opening up. It's just, it, it just 
it fills a huge gap that you see just, and a lot of people that happen have these issues yeah absolutely it's amazing <clears throat> it's amazing to see and I, I remember reading those formulas um when i was first in school because that inspiration that came for me was when i was reading those the formulas the jungle jing's formulas for the first time and tiny little um details and just thinking wow this is just such a next level of, of sophistication in terms of the clinical application you know one young change or you know this t little this up and that down just these tiny little changes from from each of those three formulas and you've, you've got this um you've got this entirely different um uh, uh different different pattern um and so why do you think you see so much i mean i see it a lot too what's your what's your take on why we see so much of this pattern today Look, a lot of people would say, oh, because, you know, I'm based in Queensland, Brisbane, Queensland, they would say, oh, it's the, the climate. But I don't think so. You know, the nature of people today in our lifestyle, we control a hell of a lot of our, our uh, climates with air conditioning, um, where just the nature of our, our lifestyle and living, we, I, I feel that's, that climate always has a, an involvement. However, I think it goes a little bit beyond that. Um, our foods, we're, we're eating foods and generally we consume way too much, more than what we need. Our foods are a lot richer. We have a lot more availability and, you know, alcohol, richer foods, sugars and so forth. Um, and people just consume way too much these days. Um, I think that's a big part of it. I think there's another big part is that people, you know, you don't just digest your food, you digest your thoughts and people are in their heads immensely today. And, you know, people are just consuming and burning up internally and they create a lot of um, congestion and st stasis that the harmonizing approach of trying to clear and decongest these uh, tissues and fluids um, are so important for harmonious flow and, and um, for people's health and I, th I think that's where I'm seeing lots and lots today people are way too much in their head and um, and so the by her and the the um, the shish and tongue formula is just really nicely tying together, both, both pathologic, uh, physiologically, because ultimately all we're trying to do is restore physiology. And so, the, you know, the formula can be repeated over quite often in a day, seeing a lot of people, but you're treating actually a very, a, quite a variety of conditions. Um, and so, but it, the, the, because you ultimately, all you're trying to do is return physiology to normal and, you know, the, the one, one formula treats a hundred conditions, you know, story that everyone loves to quote is true, but it's because of one thing, it's, you know, ultimately it's physiology. That's all we're trying to restore. Um, and people do, we're, we're fairly similar. We have lots of quirks and tweaks to things, but we still do things in a fairly similar and repeated pattern and, and fashion. And that's where I think a lot of things are coming up a, a lot more and more today. Do you find this pattern more with um, men or women, or do you think it's uh, you think it's even? Um, I'm just thinking. Uh, perhaps a little bit more in men, just for the nature of things. Um, I see a fairly. I used to my practice used to be maybe eighty five percent women, and I've gone more and more to about I'd say fifty fifty now, um, but. Perhaps a little bit more towards men, I would say. Um, no, yeah, I, I would say maybe if I was, to, it would be leaning a little bit more towards men. However, it seems that everyone's. <laughs> I see. I see a lot of it in in practice, but uh, I guess you could say I would lean very quickly to towards men. I think whether it's just the nature of eating more, consuming more, lifestyle, socialising, drinking, and so forth. Um, these things tends to heat people up and congest. Mm. And so, talk me through typically how you would think about this formula and how you would um, how you would play with the formula in terms of the modifications or the um, the Shengjiang gun cell or Bunsha Shishintang and, and how you would um, how you approach that in clinic. <laughs> yeah, look, it's a it's always in my mind. I mean, when someone walks in, they sort of, I mean, straight away a person seems quite robust and so forth. I, I had a, a classic example as a, as a young guy last um, couple of weeks ago came in for um, a, a excessive sweating disorder. 
Um, they're basically had sweating from the legs and buttocks and quite heavily and he, to this point that he had to change through the day and it would be quite embarrassing and uncomfortable. And I had the fortune that he had already been to see a couple of other practitioners um, and they'd gone down the fairly traditional uh, sweating approach. So he'd been on indeficient formulas, um, Utsong Ichitang, Romania 6, Chibai uh, Dihongwan, he'd done the um, Yuping Feng Sun and I looked at the guy and I said, oh, okay. He had been at the four because I said, I'll bring what you've been taking or what you've got. And he brought me these formulas and I looked at the formulas, which mm. for me are fairly deficient formulas. And I looked at the guy and I'm going, it's not Wayne Hill. You're deficient. <laughs> he doesn't <laughs> sound very deficient. <laughs> uh, you, 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 there's no Wayne Hill, you're deficient. And I said, look, I don't mean to be rude. I'm standing on people who have not been who have not been successful. I can see clearly this is not going to work. And I just, I said, I shook his hand. So I already felt his hand. His hands were warm. They were sweaty. He was fairly... Robust, he was fairly young. It's just like this guy is not deficient in any way, shape, or form. He's heading towards it. And I just said, it's easy to pick the symptoms that go with these people, you know, restless stress, restless mind, sleep disrupted, um, their stomach is sensitive, and so forth. And you know, and of course, you, you had those patterns pretty quickly. And it's, um, I see this a lot where, you know, one of the first problems with insomnia, for example, is just the stomach. You've got to harmonize the stomach. Um, and so even on the abdomen and the hara, you know, the, the heart is actually the epigastrium. And so this glomus mm. pattern, which what the Shishin tongues uh, well known to treat, this is the heart they're treating, the disrupted mind. You've got a full stomach and just, I mean, anyone who's overeaten will know that, you know, you could have a restless night's sleep and lots of dreams and so forth. And so, you know, you, you, the guy's restless, he's quite nervous, he's got a lot of stuff going on and, you know, I just, then you feel his pulse and it's instantly you can feel this, this stasis and heat in, in his system. And, um, you know, he had irritable bowel, he had food sensitivities, uh, he had been out of work with COVID, he just got a new job. So he was really nervous about that. And, and of course, he's feeling really about the, concerned about, about what's going on. So, you know, for me, it was a very easy, I mean, it just stood out. And it always makes me nervous when a, when a formula stands out too clearly because it's like, okay, I'm going to get caught out for sure. It looks too obvious. But uh, he, he had quite a positive response to the formula, which was good. But that's the, the case. You often see them, they're very uh, uh, light sleepers or they have very vivid dreams. Um, their mind's just not settled. Basically, their mind just can't descend and go in, in interior because the stomach's full and hot and they can't, they can't drop down inwards. And so the Shishin Tones try to unblock that, um, clear that congestion and allows that mind to settle and be calm. And so these formulas are fantastic for sleep. You know? um, it's so interesting, isn't it? You know, you don't think about, I mean, you know, if you're going through, there's lots of students that listen to this. So, you know, you, you wouldn't think, or no lecture you'll ever get in school will say, oh, yeah, you know, it's one of the top formulas to think about for insomnia is, is a session time. It just wouldn't even occur. Um, and, but it's so interesting when you see a child with a full tummy, they just have a restless night. They just tossing and turning and tossing and turning. Um, and I mean, look at, you know, colic or something like that. That's a perfect example, right? Oh, exactly. And then, and then they have a clear, they have a good night's sleep and they're just lying on their back, their arms right up, <laughs> like, literally like babies. So yeah, exactly. yeah, clear the stomach, clear the, clear the clear young Ming and you're, you're sorted, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, the, the clearing young Ming is a good example. I mean, we tonify solid organs by filling them, but hollow organs we tonify by doing, doing, doing what they were designed to do, and, and hollow organs are designed to be empty, and we're stuffing ourselves all the time with food. It's almost people can't go, you know, a few hours before they their energy drops, they get their blood sugars, or they feel weak or fatigued, which is madness. So allowing that young Ming, the hollow spaces to go hollow periodically is actually a really healthy and helpful thing and it's one of a lot of people have a lot of these stomach issues i you know, i talked to them about you know the concept of um intermittent or time restrictive eating you know giving your stomach a little bit of a break trying to get a bit of a break between the two you know trying not to overeat on certain foods and certain things and you know that often itself can can create a lot of um harmonize a lot of people in in uh, their, their stomachs alone but uh this eating desire is a, is a big one in, in people in our, in our society this you got way too much food all the time <laughs> and too many too, mm. many, too many varying opinions on diets. 
And and the, the we just don't employ any macrobiotic principles whatsoever. I mean, you know, you think about uh, the way Australians anyway drink uh, drink a cup of coffee. It's on an empty stomach first thing in the morning. Look at like cultures that drink coffee. You know, have done for for a long period of time. It's always as a um, as a an aid to digestion afterwards to stimulate the digestive system after you've eaten. You don't you have your espresso like after a massive carb load of <laughs> pasta and. And, exactly. Um, you don't have it like that. And then um, I think the most diver- the most macrobiotic principles that are used in Australia are probably a bit of onion on your on your hot on your sausage roll, you know, on your sausage, you know, your <laughs> your sausage uh, your, your sausage sanger. Yeah, like, out, oh, outside of Bunnings, you know, Bunnings are using those principles every day. <laughs> to be the barbecue, the <laughs> Bunnings, onions. <laughs> Who would have? <laughs> yeah, yeah, all those. I cakes. think there's a lot of. What's that? Sorry. Yeah, no, I think that's exactly it. Yeah, a, a lot of good, good science and you know research is always interesting, but I always preface it by who's done it for a thousand years. If they've done it for a while, it'll have stuck for a reason, you know. And um, once you can find, once you can understand, once you understand the basic principle, of which I think I use the lens of Chinese medicine to look through everything, that there's a reason behind that thinking and reason behind that behaviour and those choices. Um, it makes more sense, you know. People talk about, for example, raw food. You know, there's big movement for raw food and vegans and so forth. And I, I don't disagree with them. You know, I've stopped talking and arguing with people on things. Um, but it's just interesting. I say, well, who's done that for a long period of time, like a thousand years? And how did they do that traditionally? You know, raw foods were culturally, you know, which cultures had that? You know, we, in Japan, you know, your sushi and so forth. But it's always with, you know, your pickled gingers, your wasabi. I mean, that stuff was designed to fire up the stomach to handle and digest and process that. And then, you know, they they would then go into a season when they would go out of or coming out of um, uh, or going into, uh, I think it was the autumn season, when the eel, eel is a traditional food that's eaten to try and warm and strengthen digestion after going through periods of, of, of eating lots of cold foods and, it's like, and a lot of cold drinks and things like that. So it's like, yeah, they've done it for a long time in that way for a reason. It's sort of set with it. Um, you know, salads, I haven't got a problem with salads, but salad today is, you know, iceberg lettuce, cucumber, tomato, maybe onion if you get a bit fancy. But I mean, that that's not how salads were designed. You know? mm-hmm. Salads are full of bitters and then you have these really pungent, spicy uh, dressings to help you break down and, um, eat these foods and it's always as a side and accompaniment not as a the main bulk of things so yeah you, you things, always you so always get things. these um yeah these watery water water type ladies and these big sort of round ladies who desperately trying to lose weight and they're, they're doing their exercise and they, all they do is just eat salads eat salads eat salads i don't understand why I'm, and they're actually just keep putting on weight I'm like yep that's the problem. And they eat salads and they, which is not, no, no, nothing wrong with salads. It's slow like to tell people there's poor, poor times and place for everything. They're, but they're eating salads and they're sort of juggling, uh, slugging on water as if there's some shortage. And it's just like, you know, put the water down, you know. Just, <laughs> the <laughs> thirst is a problem. There's a reason you can't have your thirst is your body can't process all the fluids that are coming in. You know? And again, coming back to that principle, get that physiology. The body was designed to do something in a certain way. And when you veer from that, you always veer in a certain direction. So that's why coming back to that dissertation times, you see these formulas and it's just like, wow, they're really diverse. Uh, I had a gentleman the other week came in with um, leg spasms and cramping. Now, that was his, 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 his presenting complaint. You know, I'll take everyone's pulse, come in. It's like straight away, it just felt like, here we go, dissertation time. And I just said, dog, how's your sleep been? Oh, yeah, a bit restless. And all this. I said, do you find your digestion a bit changeable, things like that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. These are things that people live with every day are considered very normal or common is a better word rather than normal. And they just think that's just the way you do things. And I just explain things about how the digestion works and how we try and do things. And, and I use the Shishin tongue to treat his leg cramps and, um, you know, crazy, you know, well, people go, you know, the, the, the other student always had to be there. Why is the leg cramps? And I said, well, you know, stomach channel. I mean, hello, you know, the guy's major leg channels are, are mm-hmm. getting congested, gallbladder, stomach. I said, you just decongest the stomach and the rest will happen with that. And um, 
And it's just interesting how well that worked and how well that, it gets just bizarre little things like that, but it, it works very common. Just follow the basic principles. I, I, things are basic. It's always nice in hindsight how things look basic. But um, that basic, that, that's, those physiology principles that we're trying to follow, I think, are the, are the key ones. And so with diagnosis, do you sort of um, poke the epigastrium to... I will when I like when, when yeah when people lie down I I use I, I check the abdomen a lot because with the the Japanese style they do needle the abdomen a lot and so that tightness through the epigastrium is pretty standard. In fact, you'll get it to the point that I'll you will feel on the epigastrium or around between your end twelve to fourteen the hardness that cotton develops there, and um, they, there's that restriction when they come up underneath. And that's common, but if they develop a real I mean, this is a really weird, weird thing. You can give up this hardness on that tummy. And it's like, it, you know, it's fun to play that game. Like people go, you know, they, you, you know, I know straight away that you know, they, they're digesting a lot of thoughts. And I ask them, you know, have you had a lot of stuff going on? Are you, you you're sort of coming to terms with trying to make a decision on certain things? And it's like, inevitably, it have, it, they always answer, yes, well, how'd you know that? I said, oh, this stomach here, you know, you don't just digest food, you digest your thoughts. You're processing and depleting and straining your, uh, the, the spleen and stomach spleen, the centre, through this continuous thought process, and that consumes chi, uses up your vital force. And, I mean, that's what we try to, if you can free up and soften this area, they start to feel better. And it's, you know, it, it happens because you remove and soften that area that's hard and they feel better as a result of that. And then this, you know, the symptoms they were presenting with resolve by themselves as a result of bringing back proper physiology, not necessarily chasing a symptom. And so when you're differentiating between gun sao xie xin chung, sheng zhang xie xin tan, and gun sha xie xin tan, or do you standard way that you differentiate, or do you combine these formulas? What's your, what's your approach with that? I, t- I tend to, the pulses, uh, as we're taught, um, the pulse is our major, my major diagnostic tool is to separate. Um, but in just general terms, um, the Shishin tongues, when I see more of a deficiency pattern, start what, we've, what the classics refer to as deficient, deficiency taxation, when a person starts to have a little bit more weakening happening, a little bit more, they're consuming and burning out a little bit more, the Gansa Shishin tongue will have preference. Um, pulse wise, it's very clear for our system how those two develop. The only difference I use for those is. Um, I'll, I'll swap out the gun cell and the drug gun cell. I'll pivot between those two. I've had um, over the years that it, has, it happens so often that I just I have to test myself with people now. And um, But, it, for example, I'll use a lot of the shishin tongues. If they're really depleting, depleted a lot, more deficiency taxation, you need more of the supplemental sweet nourishing and harmonising and tonification of the, uh, the gun cell or drug gun cell. But I'll also use that a lot with a lot of the skin conditions because it just works very nicely on skin conditions. You know, it's in the Jing Gray chapter on you know fox and glove disease, so the STD pat formula that's there. You know, for a lot of skin conditions, it just clears up so much skin conditions. It's crazy. I mean, I treated myself for eczema through gun association tongue, and I still use it if I have high lots of stress. My skin can sometimes play up or starts to get a little bit dry. So the gun slash shooting tongues I'll use for those type of things, but I'll only swap and um, differentiate the drug gun cell and the gun cell. If they have a little bit more, what, I, what would be more traditionally thought of stomach heat. So if they've got more bad breath, definitely out goes the drug gun cell and I'll keep the gun cell in. Because I've, I've used it many times and I've had uh, the patient come back and go, oh, look, everything, the skin's better, the tummy's better, these are the things. But my, my partner's been saying that my breath's got really bad since going on it. And inevitably, it's always been with your gun cell. I swap it into gun cell and their bad breath goes and it just seems to clear. And so I've used that as a differentiating tool. And if the skin's a little bit more um, of a, I, I want to use less of the, to, the, the, the honey fried tonification aspect, I'll use the gun cell and it seems to clear up the skin a little bit more for those toxic heat type patterns. Hmm, very interesting. And when the um, try when it, let me got, uh, try, try. I'd love to know if it's just if it's my 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 test group of one or of my own experiences. But I'd love to hear <laughs> if you if you get the same thing. 
<laughs> that's no, it's really interesting because you know, Jua Gun Sao, there's some um, there's still some debate um, about what Jua Gun Sao is in the Han Dynasty as opposed to the Mijua Gun Sao. Um, so it'd be interesting if it's the Mijua Gun Sao versus sort of just Chow Gun Sao and Gun Sao. Yeah, that would be, that'd be an interesting uh, comparison as well. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a experiment with that. I'm, that's really interesting. Yeah, just and uh, and if 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 they've not told you, ask them. Do you have bad breath? It's the or, or I, I, I just start to ask now because it'll be one of my things. I'll differentiate. I'll ask about the breath and everything. And or does your partner ever complain about bad breath? Or they can be there. Oh, if they say yes or no, I'll just keep that in mind with what I'm doing. But it's this the gun shell gun station tone is still where you approach. But I'll I'll just sort of ask that question in passing. And what about with cough? The what about if with the when the patient's got cough because you um you know that um that wrenching in there um when you've got your cough do you do you pull out the wrench and dart sal and then do you do you go to pal jung or what do you do with that? I, I will. I, I've been sort of going back and forth with a lot of this. The, I mean, the classics go from the perspective with cough to take out the wrench and the darts are, and I will use that as a standard. But in some of the cases where, um, for example, if they have um, a dong pulse, which is in our system a very clear indicator, I will, I will, or they may have more fluid deficiencies going on. I may keep the wrench in, but keep, I think the, I think the darts are is the one that I found with me most consistently that you've got to remove. The wrench in can be optional. Um, depending on other symptoms. Um, but normally I will take them both out and depending on what's going on, how much depletion is going on, how much fluid sufficiency is, is happening, I will keep the Ren Chen in or if they've got the Dong, I will keep it in straight away. And you always use Ren Chen. A lot of people substitute with Dong Shen and Tizer Shen. Are you, are you in that? Yeah. Are you a fan of that or do you kind of use the, or the, you know, obviously, like, I'll recognize that it's a bi wrenchen, not yep, a bi, red wrenchen. Exactly. Yep, um, I just, just, yeah. I just stick to the bi wrenchen. A lot of people have used others, and I think there's not a problem with that. Um, I've just kept consistency and I, I don't try to vary it too much. Yep. And now you mentioned, um, you mentioned by her, you were talking about yep. by her earlier, by her form. Interesting to see how you, how you play with this. Yeah, look, the by her, I mean, the Shishin Tang formula, is, is, as we know in our system, is a, is a five and two. You've got five herbs for Tai Ying, two herbs to harmonize. You've got the Huang Lin and Huang Qing. And um, the, the bulk of the formula is actually supporting the center to prevent that progression in the confirmations of it going into the uh, Yin confirmation. You know, you're really trying to support that uh, and stop that progression into the Yin confirmations. So it always made sense to me that that was there. And um, in a, some of the cases that the, uh, Dr. Chen would use, some of the more chronic, more severe cases, he would bring in the, the bioformers. And I thought that was really interesting because where tie-in fluids can come from pericardium or lung, they're both, they're both nutritive um, for, uh, formulas, uh, restorative formulas. And so just you know, reflecting on that a little bit more and... Mm. Um, you know, we we, I see, we see a lot of the the repeated flares that people can have these you know coming back and getting these colds or sore throats and things like that, and the more and more these flare, I mean, in the Jingwei, you know, the, the malaria chapter, the um, you know, oh, your, what's your famous pill that you make, Simon? Um, the which one? Sorry, I missed that. Your famous pill you make. I've just gone blank. Um, we make a lot of famous pills. pills the here. malaria, the malaria <laughs> pill, the, the mother of all malaria. Um, oh, be a judge in one. Oh, be a judge in one. Sorry, thank you. I was going to have a blank. Yeah. Um, that, that repeated flares, I mean, what happens is ultimately fire has to be, fire outside of the imperial palace, so to speak, the the minute, the, the emperor, fire, and the, the mandate of fire moving throughout the body has to have a medium or a substance. No fire exists outside of having something to burn. And it's either a tie in fluid or blood, it has to be somewhere carried by something. And um, this repeated flares that we see, I mean, the 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 BHNG one, you know, for tumors and masses and repeated flares, it's basically 
it, it makes a natural for me it was a natural progression that okay that makes more sense you know how do you, you cool someone you still require fluids but they're burning and using sub, a substance and nutritive is the most common thing this medium for chi or blood to be moving in between and so the the bio formulas it seems and people today they, i mean especially now with with everyone experiencing COVID and the sort of everyone being you know, quite uncertain and stressed and pressures and so forth that are being put on everyone. Um, I see it so often. People, you know, the bioformers is one of the classic formulas for uh, vexation is one of the key symptoms. And it's a great word. It makes no sense and no one relates to it. But the, the idea of just being vexed, being this rigid restlessness, this agitation, this unsettledness, I mean, that's if that's not a, a sign of the times today, I don't know what is. And, um, you know, so when they have these repeated flares and those fluids start to heat up and congest, they get more and more agitated, more and more restless. And bringing the bioherb formulas into play there just ties in nicely as another way of supporting uh, tying nutritive fluids, whether it's from the centre or in the lung. And um, so bioherb, I, I use a lot of bioherb, bioherb hasha often or uh, bioherb dihuang. Um, depending on other indicators, the Baihu Huasha often has the fluids really start to heat up, so it's very common that they may have a bit of uh, warm urine or they feel a little bit warmer than normal. And it's really good when the fluids, for example, with um, in our system, we talk about the fluids heating up and the, and the ringing in the ears is a really common one. And so even if the often I find if they don't have warm urine or they're not aware of the urine, a lot of people have ringing in the ears if they have that pulse indicator. And I'll just uh, if it's if they don't have warm urine, I'll ask if you have tinnitus. And if they say yes, I still will use the bahuquasha. Basically, ease fluid fill sac with little little material there that gets all congested. And that ringing the ears is really common. And you just make that little tweak to the formula, and it just really helps to calm that down. Oh, very interesting, man. So with the um, with the dose of her and so you so you're adding you're taking a session time, you're adding. By her dihuang or by her washer. So, what are you, what kind of dosages are you doing? Because obviously, the the um the old dosages are all you know piece or bowl, bowl, bowl yeah. or this the preparation techniques a whole another issue like the steep overnight for all those formulas. Yeah, um, exactly. So, if what what kind of dosages are you using for if your if your standard dose is three grams per one liang, what are you yeah. using by her at? Um, it's generally a lot higher. Um, by okay. her is normally sixty. Um, oh wow! Okay. Yeah. I, so I, sixty I, to a to a uh, twelve gram, a nine gram of Huang Chi sort of thing. Oh, Huang Chi, sorry. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Nine gram wow. Huang Chi. Okay. So your standard dose is sixty, or do you have variations? Um, it's normally I find by her it needs a bigger dose to have the an effect or, or really to be noticeable in the uh, mm. for the, the nutritive. Um, Hua Shi, I will go at 30, um, but it's only also the formula tends to be pretty big then too. Mm, yeah. And you also need, as the... You need two people to carry the damn thing out. And um, <laughs> so the bag's getting pretty big. And so as you're, um, as the patient's symptoms are getting sort of this emotional side of things are getting better, are you just easing up or you just kind of drop it one day? Do you, do you taper it off and then let it let the shit take over or... You already by that time transitioning to a different um, a different uh, formula. I will generally just um, stop it, um, but if I feel that there is still a little bit more of a requirement there, I may drop the by her down to thirty. But I personally like to just stop and then see how the body go, does without. Um, mm. And if it needs more, then it just means you need more for a little bit longer. Okay. Wow. Very interesting. Um, but, but, but when it works, it works. When, when you're correct, I mean, everyone loves to be correct in their diagnosis, but uh, you know when you're right because the, the effect is quite, quite immediate. There's no hesitation on it. <laughs> oh, I have absolutely incredible things with the by her D1. I think I've probably told you the story where I was treating this lady with schizophrenia and she was halfway through the, she'd had schizophrenia for a couple of decades and then she was drinking the, to buy her dihuang tongue and then and then halfway through the cup her voice is just stopped in her head oh, i just nice. can't understand that at all but 
don't really need to, but um, yes, yeah, such a powerful herb. It's really amazing. Um, yeah, I, I think that, I mean, that, to me, that makes so much sense. I mean, there is the, um, the schizophrenia formula in our system of the, um, I'm just going blank again, Shendi. The Shendi formula for, uh, apologize, I'm just going blank. Huang Chi Di, uh, Huang Chi Di Huang Tang, isn't it? Huang Tang, yep, that's the one. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, keeping me on track. Um, <laughs> I, I, I think the nutritive is the key, and I think people are really agitated and restless and unsettled, um, more so than ever at the moment. And any ways that you can supplement nutritive, because I'll often, I mean, the buy her, and if you really need a lot of thickening, I'll use buy her with Shen Di. Um, I'll usually do the buy her first, then depending on whatever's happening with the other physiology or pathology, the Di Huang uh, with the buy her or with um, Hua Shu. If they're, you know, they're a little bit more restless, the pulse is racing, the germa, you need extra cooling um, and extra moistening of those fluids. Um, I'll, I'll keep those variations. And I mean, even you can see that progression in the Chai Hu formulas where, you know, the Muli um, and um, Chen Wai Fen, Chai Hu Gui Gan Zhang Tang, it's already there. You see repeated flares, more chronic conditions. You know, um, it was interesting. What was one of the things that Ikeda Sensei said that he said the Chai Hu Gui Gan Zhang Tang for him was a formula they didn't see a lot in um, originally. It was more of a condition for more chronic, long, older conditions. That you would start to see that he said but today you see it more and more often and i thought well this made so much sense to me from that model of, of nutritive and another way of softening those fluids and moistening that become hard and congested over time and in some people i will combine a multiple i'll have by her i'll have hua shu i'll have moli chen wa fen in the formula um and that, that with a, a shishin tongue and that really just nicely smooths things out very very nicely and addresses all those hardened fluids, deficient fluids, racing where it might be speeding up. And people's just hard, um, people's hearts are unsettled. And one of the things I always keep in mind about the the heart and the pericardium is that it's a two way door. You know, it, the pericardium is that part of the guard and the protector of the of the emperor and the heart. But it's it's always a two way door. There's an inward and an outward. So there's your expression outward of your desires, your creativity. And that goes out, which is the heart's, heart's expression. But then there's that inward, outward, inward inflection that the environment, our, 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 our colleagues, our workplaces, our relationship have on the heart. And that two-way door, I, I see that often as a hinge that needs to be adjusted and regulated. And I think that's where the, the by her have, have a real key place to um, address. Yeah, absolutely. And JP, what about... Um... What about the application of this formula for kids? Do you see that a lot? Yeah. Kids, kids, kids are surprisingly good. Um, I'm, I'm pretty abrupt, abrupt and upfront with them. I tell them this, this formula tastes terrible. And if <laughs> the parents are okay with it, kids normally will drink. They always, you know, the kids will always look at their parents before they drink anything. And if their parents are pulling funny faces or, oh, my God, I hope <laughs> they take this, you can guarantee the kid's not going to take it. But it just works. Yeah. <laughs> it works really well when the kids take things, and they, you know, I use it a lot. Again, with skin conditions, I see lots of kids with skin conditions. Um, the shishin tongue seem to be real good, and kids' eating patterns are really all over the place. I find, um, and so just to help settle that stomach and that restlessness, that sweating, they get really sweaty heads and things like that. It just really works nicely for that. And after Halloween as well. Oh it's yeah, Halloween. Halloween's about the business and a lot of these fates and ludicrous celebrations are well. <laughs> not necessarily the best for health, but Jesus, they bring people in too. It's crazy. <laughs> That's a great combo, the buy her, the buy her as well. Yeah. All the kids got the, the, yeah, um, yeah. the pants scared off them. So, um, yeah, it's good. Absolutely. No, I see, I see it a lot and I just use that as, and depending on more how stubborn that pattern is, that what I see that emotional restlessness and emotion. I will bring in more of the by her formulas, by her Di Huang Hua Shu Jimu, into that, even Chen Wen and Mu Li to, uh, to when it's what I see is more of a stubborn case and that just seems to provide physiological fluids and then enough of the breaking down of the turbid con constrained form um, turbidity that's there 
in with the shishin tongues that just sort of come together quite nicely. This is such a great, you know, such a great approach to how to use the medicine. You know, it brings it back to that sort of artistic bent where we actually, you know, actually looking at pathophysiology and then applying a formula rather than saying it just treats this condition. You know, understanding the mechanisms behind something and being able to apply the formula and being able to make the modifications based on those is so much more, um, you know, it's, it's totally different to the, to the TCM model. Totally, totally different. Um, it is. I mean, it is different. And I, I find it personally just more satisfying. Clinically, it's more satisfying um, to understand what's going on or understand when it's not working. <laughs> when uh, you know, Everyone loves to be correct, but like when, you, when you're stuck and what you're doing is not working, you, what do you do then? You know, you've got to go. You, 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 ultimately, everyone runs out of tricks. And, you know, oh, I've got this trick. I use this this point or this formula for this. And you know, that's the trick to clear up that. You know, we all have a bag of tricks, but the bag of tricks quickly run out if you get a complex or difficult patient. And um, we all have those. And um, being able to think through that, this, the process and the pathology or physiology, what's going on and what's out of pattern, I think is more, much more satisfying. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. And, and there's such consistency in the formulas too. Like, you know, this idea of hardness, you know, the muli as a salty softening for the hardness, which is the guala, uh, chenai ferna muli um, is in the by her formula. But you see it in, Tan Long Jin uses his thinking, he's, he's, he's simply, without being condescending, he's simply, his thinking is very complex, but it's so simplistic in how he thinks about things. You know, in the in the Chateau Tan, hardness on the rib side hardness you know he takes out darts out he puts in muli so there's this always always this and these repeated concepts it's like okay makes sense like i can see where these things are coming and then if i look at a set of formulas or th that may have an area an, an overlap on how they overlap i can start bringing those ideas across and then you get backup confirmation and that's what he did that for them and that's why he was i can imagine that's what he was um thinking and how he was going through that, whether that's just major egotistical on my side, but I find that really enlightening. It just switches on light bulbs for me to think and to start thinking through problems in difficult cases. Well, it's about precision as well, you know, oh, yeah. like, you know, you, you can get more and more, you can get that razor sharp thing. I think we remember that time um, we were up at, um, up in Armadale, um, and observing in clinic, uh, Laurie, and we were remember at the end of the day, I remember just looking at you and both of us just shaking our head yeah. and it just keeps getting better and there's more and more precision and um yeah it's just yeah, it blows your mind it really does and it's and, it, and it's great because it is it comes back to the more simple childlike you can keep your mind and your thinking you put your, your patients will always develop a complexity um beyond any level that you could i mean you just have, we have Western medicine to go complexity. I mean, if you want to go into complexity, go down that rabbit hole. But to be able to overview things with, with these ideas, but then being able to go in deep at times when it's needed, I think it's, um, that's, what's that's what's exciting about this. Because it is a medicine. It's not just treating the worried well. Where, you know, we have people coming with real serious mm -hmm. things. And these people at the time, you know, maybe talking about you know, 1,800, 2,000 years ago, that, that, that was their medicine at the time and they were trying to, work out complex cases and complex issues yeah absolutely 100 percent. So, so insomnia skin conditions um a lot of digestive uh, issues a lot of people have di yeah digestive systems so you mean like when you say digestive so do you think you think um there's these kind of allergies like sensitivities and stuff like that do you think that sort of plays into it as well it can do um Ultimately, it doesn't resolve there. Uh, I find it was it, you, it will start there because they often they they've got allergies, which is normally people have, today. Have, I've noticed allergies is an interesting thing where food sensitivities and allergies are developing, and people just try to treat it by removing the food. And what happens is by the time they end up seeing you, they've got more and more foods they can't eat, and their their window of eating becomes less and less. And they've had multiple cases of antibiotics medications trying to eat this and try this diet try and do these things and i heard this and they come into and they're, they're just a mess nine times out of ten 
you're starting through the harmonizing, settle that, and then moving into more to try and repair and strengthen the body's ability to process and separate foods, um, which originally was, was a, a normal function with the body, but has become congested, mixed up, or defunct or broken over time. And so whether you leave your shishin tongues via, you know, we have a, an idea of a wet and a dry pattern, once that dampness and heat and, and turbidity leaves, you're either left with wet, cold water or dried out. So, you know, you, uh, one transition out of the shishin tongues is a, um, moving into a lijong wang type of approach and you can borrow some of the huang li and huang Qing to transfer that across and that works quite nicely to carry things over. Yeah, I, I use that a lot, and I'm really people with a lot of people with a lot of food sensitivities. I will bring that in earlier. I'll bring the baiju into the formula earlier, and that's actually a nice way to to bring that across. Just thinking, you know, you talked about this harmonization and this transition outwards and into, you know, you can follow up this or it starts with this. With that, that that concept is such a new, you know, it's a new concept for a lot of people to kind of grasp. But in general. Uh, and it's a whole other topic. Um, yeah. But but in general, sort of this harmonization period, do you find there's a there's a there's a length to this period, or do you think it just goes off? Um, it just goes off your pulse and, and your diagnosis. Um, it, it I don't ever see a, a length of time. It can it can vary. You know, maybe a couple of weeks up to a month. But um, it, a lot of it's just your, your pulse and symptom. Confirmation. I think if people can just bring in the by her approach to thinking with tie in fluids rather than being drying out or congest, turbid and congested, which you know, think of tie in from both lung and spleen, you then in a thing in that aspect of nutritive, I think it's it'll be, I think people will find that a really interesting idea and see a lot of relevance to their, I'm hoping they'd see a lot of relevance to their clinical cases. Well, I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will. Um, it's, you know, it's, I remember when we were um, discussing uh, bringing these formulas, some of these formulas to Australia and remember saying, oh yeah, you know, <laughs> we want to order like, you know, 500 bottles of Gun South Yeshinton. And I remember Andy going, really? I've never even <laughs> used that formula. <laughs> but uh, if it doesn't get sold, so <laughs> it's that right. applicable. So yeah, it's pretty amazing. It's such a, a, a sort of a, a workhorse formula for me that I use so much. Um, I see so many people with variations. That idea of congestion, centralised congestion, using the Huang Chin to cool and decongest is so pivotal to that rather than just the Chai, you know, using a Huang Chin approach rather than the Chai Huang Chin approach with the, the Chai Hu tongues, I think is a really good point of differentiation. And um, people just need to be able to pull through this center. And they've had repeated cases. People come to you after seeing a lot of complexes, complexity in their health, having tried medications, um, varying dietary approaches, naturopaths and other, other, other practitioners. And so they're normally just all pretty mixed up in their stomach, so forth, as well as just over consuming in sort of mental that the mental realm and uh that just dries things and heats things up so quickly it's just such a common presentation yeah it's so good we've got these tools on it to our on it in our disposal man um yeah, yeah. well I, I think um you know i've learned a lot i'm, go, I'm interested to to go and try this um this gun sale drew gun sale me drew gun sale thing out um, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and I, I can't wait to give you some feedback about this and this these by her modifications. So that's going to be really, really cool. Thanks for sharing, JP. Really appreciate oh, it. Pleasure. I hope it's of use. All right. Until we see each other soon. Thank you, sir. Thanks again, JP. Bye.